in order to solve this problem, we can expect to have or need a foundational knowledge of electromagnetic waves. The propagation of electromagnetic waves is governed by Maxwell's equations, and you should have hopefully already been introduced to Maxwell's equations in a previous physics course. But don't worry, we'll cover all important aspects of Maxwell's equations that you'll need for this course. There are two equations that are most important for wave propagation, Ampere's Law and Faraday's Law. You can write these two equations in various forms. For example, just like you can analyze transmission lines in the time domain, and then also in the sinusoidal steady state, you can also analyze electromagnetic waves in the time domain and in the sinusoidal steady state, which we'll call the frequency domain. At the top of this slide are Maxwell's equations written in the time domain pointwise form, meaning that you can use them to understand wave propagation physics at one point in space. Or we can write Maxwell's equations in integral form, which describes electromagnetic fields over a region of space. So this is for a region, and this is for one point, individual points. Whether you use the pointwise form or the integral form just depends on the problem that you're solving and which one is easier to apply. Because both equations, both sets of equations, solve for the same physics. We can also write Maxwell's equations in the frequency domain, or the sinusoidal steady state, where all the time derivatives are written as j omega, so d d d t is now j omega d, and the electric and magnetic fields are now vector phasors. So they're phasors, just like we had in the transmission lines, but since they have a direction associated with them, you see that in the time domain here, there's a vector, they have both a phasor and a vector. We uh, could use this form of Maxwell's equations when the source of the electromagnetic fields is like a sinusoid, and we're only interested in the sinusoidal steady state solution. For the moment, let's examine more closely the time domain pointwise form of Maxwell's equations. What are our unknowns in these two equations? First, let's point out that this here is the curl operator. It's operating here on the magnetic field, on the H field, meaning that the left side of this equation, when you, when you do all this together, it tells us how well the H field circulates around the point in space. So when you perform a curl operation on a vector, it tells you how well the, that field is, is cir going to circulating around that point. Next, I want to point out, so we'd have the same thing here, curl, curl operating on the E field. This would, on the left hand side of this equation, it would give us a number for how well uh, how strong of a circulation of E we're getting around that point. Next, I want to point out that the J term here is a current density, and we'll consider that as a source term. It can generate electromagnetic waves. Uh, that is, if we have any electric current flowing at our s position of interest, meaning we have a non-zero value here on the right side of our equation it will generate circulating H fields around that position. So that's what this equation means in, in words. Another way we can get circulating magnetic fields is if we have a time changing D field at that point in space. And for Faraday's law here, if we have a time changing magnetic flux density, flux density B, then that'll generate circulating E fields around that position. All right, that's a very brief introduction. Don't worry, we're going to go into more detail later. But a quick question for now, how many unknowns are there in these two equations that we have? 